The wait is over as season 4 of The Crown is finally now streaming, and what a season it was. Join me today as I take a look at the eventful season that was the second and last season with the current cast. Now some parts of this video I won't be able to withhold spoilers, so I definitely recommend watching the entire season before watching this video. You have been warned. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Rogers. But before we get into it, this video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. Now, The Crown being a Netflix original is available almost anywhere, but as I'm sure you know, Netflix in some countries, especially here in Australia, has a lot less content than other countries, such as the US, the UK, and Canada. Now, Atlas VPN offers a wide selection of server locations worldwide and unlocks GeoBlock streaming. So you can choose whichever available country's Netflix catalog you want, at speed supporting up to 4K. But not only Netflix, Atlas VPN also supports many other streaming services, including Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO, and many more. Plus, you have the added bonus of military-grade encryption to protect your privacy and your devices from malicious attacks. But wait, there's more. You can have as many simultaneous connections as you like with only the one low-price subscription on platforms including Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. So be sure to click the link in the description as they are currently running an 86% discount on their three-year subscription plan. Don't miss out and jump on that deal as we jump back into the video. Now I can think of no better place to start than Thatcher. Knowing what we know about the relationship between Queen Elizabeth II and Margaret Thatcher made it kind of cute to see the false optimism from the Queen of how she'll get along with Thatcher in the earlier episodes. And how their relationship was portrayed easily became one of my favourite parts of the entire series. I knew Gillian Anderson would be good in the role, but she was so good. I loved her having to get used to the etiquette and rules in the second episode too, and how she just did not at all fit in with the royal family's recreation time. Those situations she found herself in were so cringeworthy, and I just found myself begging for her to fit in. They really tried to make you feel sorry for her, but then things inevitably change. The thing I love most about her is how each line was so deliberate, and had such conviction behind it. Keeping with the earlier episodes, the tension building to the assassination of Lord Mountbatten, the music, gunshots going off, so intense. His death had a kind of different tone to other major deaths in the series though, as feelings between him and the family were mixed, and his letter to Charles had a very different tone to the ones he received from the Duke of Windsor last season. The first half of the season I found felt quite melancholy in tone, compared to the seasons before it at least. The sad harp music with the dark colour palette cinematography set a really gloomy scene and I'm all for it. But where the tone started to shift was timed with the introduction of someone who a lot of people were most looking forward to seeing, Diana. I enjoyed seeing Diana in her natural habitat from her roommate's perspective. It made me think about how it must feel for them, like imagine your best friend just being plucked out of your life to be next in line to be queen. Lots of iconic moments were included too, including the infamous engagement interview. Diana not only brought a youthful energy to the palace, but also to the actual show itself. Just little things, like how she listens to popular music of the time, and doesn't know the correct etiquette. Rollerblading in Buckingham Palace is also a unique way to spend your time. Her lunch date with Camilla was so captivating. It was such a long scene, but it didn't feel that way because the dialogue and conflict between the two made it almost impossible not to hang on to every word. God, and they really make you hate Charles and Camilla. How Diana was treated is just awful, and Charles could not care less about anything to do with her, really. Getting to the point where he is literally laughing at her behind her back. I liked Princess Anne's line where she said it was a rare example of the truth being worse than what the newspapers are reporting. Apparently, this season depicted Charles as so horrible that those close to the real-life royal family have expressed that the family is not happy with how he was portrayed. But despite that, how good was Emma Corrin? Some shots of her were uncanny, and her voice was spot on. It's a shame her and Gillian Anderson only got one season to really show us what they had to offer. Diana will be back next season, but will instead be played by Elizabeth Debicki. The episodes towards the middle had an almost comedic tone in some scenes, like when the Queen's assistants kept having to stand up and down as she kept leaving the room. It was subtle comedy, but I enjoyed it. It was so clever in episode 4 that they worked in Thatcher's son disappearing, causing the Queen to really level with each of her children, and have a kind of realisation how out of touch she is with their lives and, well, reality. 
But what a tense episode that Fagin episode was. The performances in that episode, especially from Coleman, were amazing. What a scary moment that must have been. Speaking of Coleman, she definitely played a more kind and understanding monarch this time around, sympathising with everyday people more than ever, and having a more understanding demeanour compared to last season. But not always. I noticed that Philip fell way into the background this time around, just sort of providing the voice of reason and support here and there for the most part, always opinionated though as he is. Another family member that got just a little bit of attention was Princess Margaret. Helena Bonham Carter is so great for this role, but I sometimes think for the most part that she's really just playing a royal version of herself, which is not a bad thing at all. Aside from, of course, her more emotional moments, for example, her solo episode focusing on her duties in the royal family. I did find that that episode was well put together, but kind of slowed down the pace of the season. But I totally see its necessity in the overarching story, and the back and forth and power struggle between herself and the Queen have been a constant theme throughout the entire series. The season's pacing otherwise was great, and it never got boring, getting just enough of each story before it felt like it was dragging. We're now going to get into real spoiler territory, so again, you have been warned if you don't want any surprises ruined. Claire Foy came back for one last speech, and I for one got way too excited when she sat down at the microphone. What an iconic performance she gave in the first two seasons, and I was so grateful to see her in the role one last time. Moving forward now to, I guess, the climax of the season and the revelation that the Queen may not be supportive of Thatcher's methods. That tension that builds to the private audience between them is incredible. When Thatcher kept talking over her, I was kind of expecting Her Majesty's patience to run out and for her to tell Thatcher her true position, but the Queen's restraint has never let her down, even when pushed to its limits. I do get excited every time she puts her foot down though, like when she's lecturing Charles and Diana about their marriage. It was a very eventful season, including many key moments of the era, and I learnt a fair bit from watching this season. But let's talk a bit about the season finale. What an emotionally charged finale it was, with fiery performances from Diana, Charles, Philip, and Her Majesty herself. I loved how they wrapped up all the storylines, Thatcher's especially with her exiting without saying a word, as the Queen's gesture was enough. Seeing her get teary was tough to watch, and then in the final scene, Diana is forgotten about in the Christmas family photo. But what was the most emotional part for me personally was knowing that this would be the last time we're seeing all these characters in these roles, including no more Olivia Colman as Queen, who has now completely sold me on her performance, and now we'll have to start getting used to Imelda Staunton in her place. I don't know about you guys, but I could argue that this was one of the strongest seasons of the series. I rewatched the series before watching this one, and it seems to be the only one packed full of history and dramatic events. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely parts of previous seasons that I enjoyed more, but as a whole, season four is hard to beat. But enough from me. What do you think? Was season four everything you wanted it to be? What was your favorite part? What was it missing? I'd love to hear what you think, so let me know. I'll be down there in the comments. But until next time, be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering your favourite movies and TV shows. If you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard, and if you had a good time hanging out, then spank that like button. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.